There was a sound like a set of massive studio lights turning off, and the room went dark. For several seconds, there was nothing. But then a haunting song sung by several voices broke through the darkness. A hypnotic, multi-layered chant in a language I didn't understand. Until I did. They were singing in Tunhar, the native language of my character. And with the song came memories. The taste of thin, soured milk flavored with a sweet floral syrup, like smooth yogurt. The feel of the wind on my face. The sight of a million birds migrating through a mountain pass. And weirdly, a memory of hiking along a trail and coming up over a bare bluff of stone that was covered in giant metallic red flies the size of small dogs. They weren't monsters. They were something important to the tomb. Something I still didn't know the full significance of. They weren't my memories. But they could have been. I was still wondering how the fuck I knew this stuff when I woke up to the stench of human filth. My wrists hurt. Everything hurt. My teeth, knees, muscles. I felt like I'd run a marathon. Or that I was, well, deathly ill and had just come out of a very bad fever. The room was smoky, the air tinted with a deep brownish haze, and it stunk like hell. My head was pounding and hot, my guts cramped with real hunger and real thirst. There was a thump beneath me, and creaking, and then my stomach dropped down from under me with a very familiar sensation. Air pockets. The wall I was slumped against began to rumble and shudder, jostling me back and forth in the nest of heavy iron chains that were snapped around my limbs. People around me began to moan, some in fear, some in pain. Worse, some of them began to cough, and my head began to pound for another reason. Pure animal terror. I was in the hold of a flying ship, sitting on the floor among a crowd of other people. It was too dark for me to make out much in the way of features, but we all looked pretty miserable. I was dressed in what looked like torn buckskin rags. I was cold, and people were sick. I'd agreed to this to get away from dying of some horrible illness, and I'd ended up stuck with a bunch of sick people. What the actual fuck, Steve? My first instinct was to test the strength of the manacles on my wrists, ankles, and neck. They were looped onto long chains that ran through stout eyelets on the hull behind me, connecting me to the other people in my row. To my left, another toon man slept in unquiet sleep, frowning even as he snored. To my right was an elf woman with brilliant platinum hair. Her restraints were even more severe than mine, a leather mask that only left her nose bare and that laced tightly around her jaw. Her hands were encased in cages that followed the shape of her fingers and didn't allow her to move them. Her clothes were torn and dirty, like mine, the collar of her tunic ripped down to her chest. Only the collar and mask stopped her shirt from falling down around her waist. A captured spellcaster? Magic. Right. The sensory hell is a game. Normally you spawn somewhere kind of neutral in an MMO. The bunny slopes, or a tutorial garden, some kind of cutesy village, or the altar of recombobulation or something not a crowded slave ship. It felt so real that it was actually weird to call up the menu. But sure enough, my HUD came up on prompt. Do you want to set up auto alerts? A message appeared over the HUD display. Sure, I agreed aloud before I thought about what I was doing. The bound mage's head turned toward me for a moment, but then she fell back and curled against the wall as best she could. Auto alerts enabled. The message cleared, showing me my main tabs, inventory, character, crafting, quests, options, artificing, and world map. The path menu was grayed out. If nothing else, my predicament gave me time to have a look through everything. The UI was gorgeous. Light on dark, clear layout. Seeing my blank inventory and being able to remind myself that this was, in fact, meant to be fun made me feel a little calmer. 
No matter how much everything stank and how realistically my stomach lurched, this world was a game. There was a way out of this situation. Somehow, 